remaking me. It's time again f to, for me to remake my avocado cucumber and aloe vera soap. And I have so much fun making this soap. It's the fragrance, it's the textures, the creaminess, just everything about it I just love. And uh, it was time to restock again. I got rid of the very last bar today, actually, so needed to make some more. And uh, I should have started sooner. But hey, better late than never, right? So uh, after getting it all, getting all my goodies prepared, I froze them in an ice tray which you see right there. There's my avocado, my cucumber, and my aloe gel. And I'm putting it in my lye solution, which is aloe juice. I've got some oat milk that I made, kale and clay, and silk. And uh, I, I had a ball making this one because while I was making it, some wonderful things happened. Um, one of which was I <laughs> got some good news about my job um, just a little bit more permanence and so I'm feeling so much better about that I'm really busy but again th that is getting better because I've got caught up and where I need to be there so it's a happy time there is so much about a soap like this that is a joy to use and for any of you that have used avocado-based soaps, uh, whether with the cucumber and the aloe vera or not, just each of those on their own are fantastic skin-loving ingredients. But when you bring these together, it creates a trifecta that is just superb. That along with the wonderful butters that are in here and the oils, and this one is has a strong, a large amount of bay laurel oil because I wanted to boost this recipe a bit. It's one that I've made several times. It's very popular. And I just wanted to add something a little more to it to just make it a little richer. And bay laurel oil has been used, or uh, excuse me, uh, <laughs> bay berry, excuse me, has been used for thousands of years. And by people all over the planet and if you ever look at Aleppo soap you know that it is a well-loved and used product um, matter of fact it was around before Castile soap was around and using it this way I just thought why not boost this recipe and make it even better and um, so that's what I'm doing here And I just have a lovely blend of essential oils here, of bergamot, orange, uh, lemon, lemongrass, uh, what else? It'll come to me. <laughs> anyway, I just really love this. It is such a fantastic combination and no one fragrance is overwhelming. And that's what I like. When you can smell something and you can't quite identify it, that's what I love. And uh, yeah, let's move forward. So as soon as I turned on the stick blender, I immediately realized an error. And that was that I dropped in a handful of cocoa butter to kind of super fat this and <laughs> the oil wasn't quite hot enough or the lye when I put it in wasn't quite hot enough to melt it so as I'm blending this you'll see those little white blobs there that is coconut butter I said coconut oil I meant cocoa butter Excuse me, I'll get it right here in a moment. So those are little globs of cocoa butter. And I thought, well, maybe the stick blender will start breaking those. <laughs> I was just hoping, right? And then I thought, well, I'll make sure that I put this through gel so that those do melt. 
that was my hope anyway. Well, in the end, that didn't happen. So when I cut this, the little cocoa butter blobs were still in place. So I stuck it in a 165 degree oven for about 10 minutes at a time. I would check it, go back and check it, and eventually they melted into the soap. So the good news is I was able to save this, this error. Now what would happen if I left it and didn't melt it? Well, first of all, it wouldn't be very attractive. You'd have little white blobs on the soap, as you will see when I cut this, when you first look the uh, image after I cut it. But it really would not be bad for your skin, actually. It would be basically, as you were washing with the soap, you would have little globs of cocoa butter that would be melting on your skin. That's not a bad thing, but it's not terribly attractive to look at. So that's why I stuck these in the oven and melted that oil. So the, the oil that's within the soap will absorb and the oil that was on the outside will absorb. And it does leave a couple of little pits in the soap where the uh, cocoa butter was on the outside. So on those, I just was able to touch up with some excess uh, shavings off the soap and put in those areas. So that worked out perfectly. And here I've just taken uh, some of the batter and I'm mixing it with a little bit of titanium dioxide, TD, and just to lighten it up a bit, just to give some variation uh, through the soap because I am going to do a hanger swirl and actually remember it this time. <laughs> so many times I plan on doing a hanger swirl and I forget. And my hanger swirls are different than others. It is a true hanger swirl because it's made out of a clothes hanger, but it's just a broken plastic end of a hanger. It's not a full hanger, but it works for me. My apologies here. I started pouring before I started the camera. But again, you can see those little bits of cocoa butter floating in the soap. So learn from my mistake and melt make sure it's fully melted first <laughs> and i could have melted it separately and poured it in i just thought because it was in little pestles that i'd made that they would just dissolve but they didn't so i had to take the extra step now i did have the molds out of the camera view for that i apologize but all i'm doing here is just getting the last bits of that lighter color on top just so i can do a pattern i don't always do a pattern on top but i'm trying to improve upon that and do a better job in this particular case you'll see it's nothing unusual i'm going back and forth just to create a pattern and then i'll pull it down the middle just to create kind of a feather and i will move the mold into camera range for So they're a little messy, but I'm working on it. I'm going to keep trying until I get them right. Thanks, everyone. So the cut is where I found the issue with the unmelted cocoa butter, where it really showed, and that was in the actual cut. And I already cut one loaf here, so I'll show you in the second loaf here the, the issue. See the little white dots? That just took away from the overall pattern and I just didn't like it, which is why I put them in the oven and heated them to melt that. Because I was really happy with these for the avocado uh, and the aloe vera and cucumber. I think that they turned out just great. And the smell is tremendous. I love this mixture. But those little white dots just bugged me. <laughs> so it was either rebatching them or putting them in a low oven and melting them. And that's what I went for. I again want to thank you all. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. 
And the feedback from the talk video that I did was just more than I could have hoped for. It was really great to hear from so many of you on that and to hear how you feel about that. If there are other such subjects you're interested in, I look forward to talking to you about them. Have a fantastic day, everyone. I look forward to seeing you in the next video, and I'll see you back soon. Goodbye.